Whether it be 14 centuries of Sunni-Shia conflict, a thousand years of Christian-Muslim conflict, religious wars underlie the unending strife in the Middle East, and they continue as a theme in modern politics. Evidence. Four U.S. presidents have bombed Iraq. Hundreds of thousands of bombs. Over the past few days, a few more. So will it ever end? And what do we do now? We can take the position, it's none of our business, it's their problem, not ours, that innocents need to be protected, that nation boundaries need to be maintained, that antiquities need to be preserved, or might it all be about oil? 4,300 American loved ones have died in the latest conflict in Iraq. Thousands returning home with fewer limbs. So do we re-engage? If yes, why do we wait until things are so bad and then get involved in a very limited way to only get drawn in completely and then get out too soon? Yesterday, as President Obama discussed the most recent limited airstrikes in Iraq, the backdrop was his helicopter, on which his bags were packed for yet another vacation in Martha's Vineyard. And as though we shouldn't be concerned, he said this. My team has been vigilant uh, even before uh, ISIL went into Mosul about uh, foreign fighters and jihadists gathering in Syria and now in Iraq who might potentially launch attacks outside of the region against uh, Western targets uh, and U.S. targets. With all due respect, Mr. President, if your team had been vigilant, why did you wait so long? Why the selective outrage? And why now? 170,000 murdered in Syria. Your red lines repeatedly violated. Our sworn enemies now proficient in the art of war. If you've been vigilant, why is it that you turned a blind eye to the Syrian civil war next door, the one that's now spilling into Iraq and Lebanon? Your feckless foreign policy at work yet again. Okay, so you killed Osama bin Laden. Thank you. But it was under your watch that the world's largest, deadliest, most well-funded terrorist organization has grown from 800 to 10,000. And you, the vice president, the secretary of state, and the secretary of defense, are all out of town on vacation or a business trip. Talk about disengagement. And we should be comfortable that your team has been vigilant. Your team is the one that said this. I am very optimistic about, uh, 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 about Iraq. I think it's going to be one of the great achievements of this administration. I think not. You think ISIS head Abu Baghdadi, released from Camp Bukha in Iraq while you were president, doesn't see that you're not engaged, doesn't know that you don't even send reinforcements for our ambassador in trouble? ISIS is evil. They behead children and put their heads on sticks. Maybe this will re-engage you. <laughs> إن الخلافة الإسلامية قامت وبإذن الله لن تتوقف يا جبناء إن كنتم رجال فنحن على الأرض فلا تأتون بالطائرات من دون طيار فأتوا بجنودكم الذين مرغنا أنوفهم في العراق وبإذن الله سوف نمر أنوفهم بكل مكان وإن شاء الله بالبيت الأبيض سوف نرفع على راية لا إله إلا الله It's not thousands of miles away it's coming to our doorstep. Prove to us and the world that you are prepared. Stop making political decisions and start making military ones. Mr. President, you failed to learn from the past. You failed to assess future danger. You're reactive, and even then, you're not effective. Mr. President, start doing what we pay you to do. Be a leader. Get back on that helicopter, roll up your sleeves, and get back to work. The safety and security of the United States of America depends on it.